Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You in the right place? You are? Yes. We're just sort of waiting for critical mass. Hi. You don't have to have a garden to have a root cellar, of course. I mean, the idea of a root cellar is it's a great way to um, keep uh, some sorts of vegetables, if not everything goes in the root cellar, um, to preserve them, low cost, um, low energy uh, way to do it. And you can get your, you can get 50 pound bags of potatoes and you can get bushels of squash from farmers, um, carrots, all that stuff. You can buy in bulk in the fall um, when it's less expensive and, and really good and fresh. And then you can put it in your own root cellar. So you don't, you know, I think some people think, oh, I don't have a garden, so what's the point of having a root cellar? And um, you'll see our root cellar actually does more than just has produce in it. We actually use it as our refrigerator too. Um, so we can talk more about that. Um, so winter squash doesn't go in a root cellar. Winter squash, such as, you know, acorn, butternut, delicata, all the winter squashes, once they're properly cured, they go into a um, into an area that's cool and dry. So they ideally like about a 50, as high as 50 degrees. Um, and we have a spot in our house where we put our, um, our squash. Onions, also, you can store them all winter, but they don't belong in a root cellar. Too cold in a root cellar, too high humidity in a root cellar. Onions go like a dry, cold storage at about 35 or 40 degrees. And we have another place in our house you noticed when you came in, garlic and onions is right in the vestibule when you came in on the left. It smells like garlic and onions in there <laughs> when you come through the door. So they like um, uh, dry, cool. Root cellar, the characteristics of a root cellar is moist and cool. And, um, and what goes into a root cellar would be all the, most of the root vegetables. So carrots, cabbage, which is not a root vegetable, but cabbage does well in a root cellar. Leeks, which is not a root vegetable, does well in a root cellar. But other than that, Basically, rutabagas, turnips, carrots, potatoes, um, all do root, that's, they will last for until March or April even in a root cellar. Basically, there are ways of preserving the greens as well. If, if you plant the greens in a greenhouse like that, a solar greenhouse in July and August, and you'll, if you go want to poke your head in there, you'll see their Swiss chard in there that's in pretty good shape. The root cellar by April is not going to have a lot left in it. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of an example of even here in New England, without a heated greenhouse, if you have a root cellar in the greenhouse, you can eat year-round pretty much fresh vegetables from your own garden. So all these carrots, beautiful. Um, <laughs> you know, I can show you basically the idea in harvesting carrots, leeks, um, beets, is that to, to keep them in the root cellar, what's nice is you put them in, I use these buckets, I fill the buckets about a third full with soil, then you put a bunch of carrots in the soil, and then put it soil over the top and put them in the root cellar. Huh. And that soil helps insulate the carrots and also keeps them moist. And you keep the greens on or you cut them I to cut right the above off. the... Yeah. yeah. The, the greens rot pretty mm -hmm. fast. So it's true with um, beets is they really need moisture. Mm -hmm. And that's what you'll see when we look at the root cellar. It, it has to stay moist. Otherwise, they just dry right out. Leeks, same way. You'll see I've got leeks already, some leeks in the root cellar, and they're in soil. And uh, that way to keep the soil mo moist, you know, it doesn't keep them too wet, but it also never lets them dry out. You don't that, wash anything that's that's in the root cellar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I cut two holes, basically, in this back corner. You usually want to do it into, in a north, north part of the, you know, root cellars generally are going to be hidden from the southern sun. They're going to be pointing north. They're going to be, oftentimes, and we can talk more about this inside, they're in the earth because it's the earth that really insulates them and keeps them at a moderate temperature. So a lot of this root cellar is underground, as you can see. And the part that isn't, this wall here, the sun doesn't shine on it because of the deck. We built this deck partly to shade the, uh, uh, partly to shade the root cellar. Um, this is the intake for the root cellar. And this is just the screen that keeps rodents out. That's the outtake. And it's so important is the way, the, ven the way they ventilate. But that's what makes these things work, is they have a natural convection, natural cold air in, warm air out cycle. And, uh, and it, but, this, but of course, the cold air in has to be a bit of a distance from the, from, from the exit point, or you're just gonna have the same air exchange. This is the roof of the root cellar here. When we go in, you'll see. It's the back <laughs> corner. It so it's at the top of the root cellar. Is it actively circulated it, or just no, passively? It, well, it's funny, it's passive, but it's amazingly active in the sense that because warm air rises, you'll see how it works. But the warm air exits here, 
it's pointing downward to keep the rain out. Right. Um, okay. If it was just right here, yeah. the intake and the hot intake would be too close to each other. And that's the way you control it, is simply by closing the intake and the hot intake, and they'll stop in that certain direction. But for instance, this is an example. You know, there's the classic, I mean, actually, these three are none, none of these are really what we have here. Um, this is a basement root cellar. And this is a classic, this is probably what most people can do. If you have a basement, even if there's a furnace in there, you can create a corner room in your basement. You can vent it properly. You can have walls that insulate it from the warmth of the furnace if you happen to have a furnace in the basement. So you, you know, some people have warm basements. Um, and, uh, and you can have a root cellar in the basement um, as long as it's insulated, as long as you can get the temperature down. Um, and um, so that's that's one form of root cellar. Then this is the sort of the, these two are more classic kinds of, uh, where you can literally put a barrel or some sort of thing in the ground, and you can pile it with potatoes, and you usually would use some sort of insulating material over the top of it, leaves, straw, soil. You've got the, the thing about a barrel in the ground in New England is it's still going to be tough to keep your potatoes from freezing, but you can do it. And there's there's obviously you can. Just make this larger and larger. You can really dig out large space. You can step, you can walk down to it. Um, there are examples of people who have. Uh, I, I've got a book here that you guys can look through, but there are so many pictures of old root cellars mm -hmm. that, and it's really fun to look through this book where uh, one guy even had an old truck in his yard, so he decided to bury the truck. And the truck was, you know, create was the room. And it was easy to wash the walls down, but he buried the truck into the side of a hill. Wow. And, uh, and, you know, he could open the back. It was like one of those delivery trucks, you know. <laughs> you know right? So, you know, and then there's the, the classic New England built probably hundreds of years ago. You know, stone, yep. stone root cellar, beautiful stone oh, yeah. into the hill. Yeah. You know. Earth. And, you know, we, when we think about root cellars, what we're really thinking about, you know, now it's like a convenience, it's kind of fun. But it was life or death mm -hmm. 200 years ago. I mean, that, that was like, wow, if our roots, if our produce fails us and the potatoes don't come and the carrots don't come, that's a big issue. Yeah. And then if we can't keep them in the winter, we're going to die. You know? so, um, so those carrots and the cabbage, it, I mean, it had to work. That root cellar had to work. And it had to protect, uh, protect from rodents. Um, and, uh, you know, it was absolutely crucial that they could eat cabbage and um, and marge and potatoes and carrots. Uh, so it was life or death. Um, here's the concept of venting. Um, is this idea that you have air intake up high, and and but, but the air that's, I mean, basically the reason it works is because cold air drops and warm air rises, right? So if you bring your cold air in and you drop it to the bottom of your <clears throat> root cellar, whatever that is, and so your, <clears throat> your actual vent is, is at the bottom of your root cellar and then your <clears throat> or the air intakes at the bottom and your, your vents at the top then you're naturally going to have cold air dropping to the bottom and it as it warms up it rises and it vents out so you have a natural cold air pushing the hot air out <clears throat> and this is the idea of how the circulation works <clears throat> so it's pretty basic you're going to have cold air introduced so these are three different pictures of of systems you can have a system where you can actually have your cold air introduced. You can, your hole could actually be at the bottom of your root cellar. That, of course, you, that's hard to do if it's buried in earth. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why a lot of times you have an intake and an outtake at the top, but you take a pipe mm -hmm. to the bottom for your intake so that your, your cold air is still delivered at the bottom. But here's a picture where, if you could, you could bring the cold air in low. Here's shelves and stuff. And then your vent is on the opposite corner, and it's high. So you can have cold air coming in and warm air going out here. Here's one, which is... Um, the cold air comes all the way in here and gets dumped out here. Put your hand down by there, and you'll feel pretty, yes. pretty strong cold air coming in. Yes. And um, and that's because the warm air up at the top is able to leave freely. If it gets, it easily can get too cold. So then we'll I'll block that. Usually we fill it with with rags and stuff. That's the best way to block it. And then I can close that wooden flap too. Uh, yes, this is the idea. This is natural convection. It works great. Uh, it's nice that you have that cold air at the bottom, and it, it is pretty dramatic. It's very cold right at the bottom. Like, we keep all our dairy products right here at the floor, right where the cold air comes in. And we keep things, and then different vegetables want different temperatures. So we have shelves, so some things don't want it so cold. 
um, carrots will freeze if they're down where the dairy is sometimes. So carrots will be up a little higher on the shelves. So there is that differential is really great because you can, you, you can put things at different, at different heights. Oh, so, so you know, root cellars, the neat thing about them is you're in energy independent. And so if you have a, you know, if you have a three days without power, you still got your root cellar. And then cool, dry storage, which is, you know, like, and this is where you can get really clever. We all think, oh, we just don't, you know, our, if you have a modern house, it's, who is it saying, it's, it's your house, you know, it's like, wow, where do I put my garlic and my onions and my winter squash? Um, you know, really, really look around. There are places you can, you know, sometimes it's underneath a stairwell, well, or, or in a, you know, on an outer wall where maybe it's in a room that you don't use as often and you can close the door. Like, our, you know, our kids now aren't here as much, so we sometimes just close one of the kids' rooms and suddenly it becomes appropriate for, for winter squash. You know, so, um, they asked you not to put the garlic in there. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, not cheaper than kids. Right. Um, so, you know, you can think about that. Uh, another thing that's kind of fun to talk about is this... Uh, idea that you can, when you harvest, if you are harvesting your own stuff, um, or even when you're buying it, but especially when you're harvesting it, if you harvest things with the roots on, now some stuff like carrots, beets, um, uh, you really need to trim, trim them up pretty well before you put them in storage, because otherwise the leaves <coughs> and some of the roots will rot, and it'll create rot for the whole vegetable. But um, you can take, like, Brussels sprouts, and take the whole plant, including the root. And you can take cabbage and take the whole plant, including the root, and store it. Those are technically not root. Those are, you know, above ground. They will store fine with the root attached. And then what's kind of neat is you can force them in the spring. You can take a cabbage that looks like it's pretty much shot. Um, and Or you can cut the cabbage part off and save the root. You can put the root in soil in a bucket, put it in your solarium, or put it outside even as it gets warmer. And it'll force, and you'll get some greens out of it. It'll it'll come back. Those are you know all these biennials. Um, if you can hang onto the roots of anything um, and for and plant it, um, you'll get you'll get just absolutely free greens. It's it's amazing. Um, they'll they'll come back and they'll and they'll do it in the garden too. If you put as I was saying earlier, if you put leaves or straw around stuff that's like oh I didn't get I didn't end up eating that. It's the frost has ruined it. Don't pull it up and throw it in your compost pile. Leave it in the ground. Put leaves or straw around it. And in the spring, you'll, it'll, it'll give you all these really nice greens. And what's great about it is it's really early greens. It's yeah. greens that you're going to get way before you can get your own by planting your spinach or, or radishes. Is um, that true for broccoli also? Broccoli will do it. Yeah. I've noticed that. My broccoli, now I, I pull almost, you know, we had this idea of in the fall of like, oh, i got to yeah. clean up the garden. Yeah. yeah. When, I, when you clean up your garden, you've just completely destroyed all these wonderful spring greens you could have gotten um, and uh, and it's something that I think a lot of people really just we just don't think about and it's only something I thought about in the last few years I mean I earlier on I used to do that you know rake all the leaves and pull everything up and be ready for the spring um, you know, another thing of course is we all are always think about how we preserve food whether it's in the freezer or a root cellar or, or wherever but the other thing also is I, I know I'm guilty of this we sometimes put things in our freezer and we're like, oh, it's going to be great for a long time. We put them in our root cellar. It's like, eat, eat your food, eat your food, eat your food. I mean, you see it over and over again. We, we put things away and then we go and we, we buy things at the store. And it's like, no, I really should just eat squash right now. You know, or, or, you know, and, and you do have to reach, there, there is a certain point, yeah, where you just say, you know what? For the next two or three months, we're just going to eat a lot of acorn squash or a lot of butternut squash. And, and sort of rethink this idea that it's like, I want all these foods year-round and never have to want to eat more at one point and less another time. And we need to get away from that a little bit. Just think about winter's the time to eat a lot of carrots, a lot of cabbage, and a lot of squash. Hey, and then in the spring and the summer, it's like, whatever, I don't need that. And, and not a time necessarily to eat asparagus or, you know, these other yeah. things. So, um, and, you know, we all fall into it because it's just so easy to get anything we want at any time of the year. But, um, but you know, the... The reality of a root cellar is that's what people ate all winter long. They ate, they ate those, mm -hmm. those things. And I think, you know, I think the body's, I, I'm, I'm convinced the body's designed for that, but that's how we've always 
that's how we've evolved. We eat, we eat what's in season. And, you know, even in a root cellar, you know that stuff is, as it gets older, it's starting to lose its nutritional value, too. So, you know, the idea is to eat everything as soon as you can, as fresh as you can. So reduce, reuse, recycle.